Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Welcome back to another episode of Next to Madison. Uh, today's a very exciting episode. I'm sitting down with a very well-known PI, private investigator. Uh, he does private investigations for cheating spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, corporate fraud, anything you can kind of think of. Uh, he's kind of the go-to guy for the celebrity elites and also Fortune 500 companies. So I am very excited to have him on the show today to talk about uh, kind of his process and when you feel you need a PI. And maybe he'll even give me some advice on how to avoid a PI, but I don't know. We'll see. But with that, being, <laughs> with that being said, I want to bring on my guest, Andy Kay. How are you? I am great. Good to be here, Madison. How are you yeah. today? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for, for being on the show. So you are, they're calling you the elite private investigator. How did you earn that title? <laughs> I guess it's just from some of the clientele and being around in Los Angeles so long. This is my 29th year last month in Los Angeles. Most PIs don't have that long of a career ever. And uh, so I've been doing it here in this market for a long time. So how did you get into private investigation? Started out uh, out of college. I got drafted into some law enforcement, and from law enforcement, when my direct uh, in supervisor went to work for a private company, his boss offered me a job. And after that, uh, that boss was an ex FBI agent. And when he retired for his second time, he took me with him to start a private investigations company. And then as that grew, I took over my part of it. And he's now a senator. And I'm still doing the investigations. Well, that, I mean, that's what an exciting job. Yeah, not most of the time. <laughs> it has its exciting points, especially over so much time that, you know, I can pick and choose what cases I go out and do personally. So that makes it better. Right. It's also got to be a very dangerous job. Uh, not most of the time. No. I mean, there is some cases that have a more of a degree of danger, but most of it's pretty straightforward and simple stuff, civil stuff. I mean, we do do a lot of criminal work. I mean, private investigators are issued concealed weapons permits in California, and that's not an easy thing to get in this state. So, yeah, yeah. it's, you know, obviously they comes with a degree of danger, but it's mostly not. Okay, interesting. And so how do you uh, prevent yourself from being uh, discovered when you're creeping about the bushes or the cars or whatever, how you guys kind of do your thing. <laughs> it's different every time. And it's because, you know, that's, that's our job is to stay private. So nobody notices we're there 90% of the time. I mean, there's a lot of things we do where it's out directly taking interviews from people, witnesses, things like that also. But, you know, there's a lot of training that goes into being good at doing surveillances. Um, a lot of times we have multiple people watching one person, so there's never one person around the whole time. Uh, there's, there's lots of tricks to staying undiscovered. A lot of it has to do with electronic surveillance that we use a lot nowadays. We use and employ drones in surveillance. There's a lot of ways to stay undiscovered. Interesting. Yeah, so it, you mentioned um, that you also do work for like cheating boyfriends and girlfriends. Is there any legal ramification around that if you're not married? Well, as far as it depends, um, you know, you've you've heard of palimony cases. Uh, the Lee Marvin case started that in California. So, yeah, you don't necessarily have to be married to have legal ramifications and economic ramifications. Uh, a lot of times people have. Um, join accounts even if they're not married they have they share you know maybe they bought a house together or cars together there's all these other things and maybe one or the other partner is spending money on a new love interest they're spending money on doing other things that they're not supposed to hiding money we have economic cheating also yeah that seems like a big one as well so when do you what would be some signs to look for um, to indicate that your significant other is cheating and at what point would you hire a PI? Um, first thing is when you discover things wrong, try to keep them to yourself. Don't just come out and start accusing because then they'll adapt and they'll start hiding those things. They'll prevent that from happening again. So you can get a lot further by just relaxing. 
don't blow your top. Maybe what you're seeing or think you saw isn't what it is anyway. So going off on him or her is not going to help you at that point. And if you start letting them know you're on to them, by the time you get to me, you're going to already have tipped your hat. It's going to make my job harder. It's going to cost you more money. So we try to tell all of our clients, okay, relax, act if as if there's nothing wrong. Don't be overly sweet. Don't be, you know, acting when you can't, but try to just relax and don't do anything. And we have some certain clients, it's like we can't tell them anything until it's over because they can't not react. So yeah. you, you have to just stay calm. But the things to watch for are changes in patterns, changes in the way they react to you, with the way they act to react to questions. Um, all of a sudden, if a text comes through and he pushes the button and deletes it very fast, or she does, or, you know, the your spouse looks at her phone and, you know, flips it over really fast and deletes it when that's not the normal thing they would do. Uh, when they, you know, all of a sudden the dogs are getting walked six times a day and, you know, he's spending an extra hour out there on the phone, all those things. Maybe they're spending an extra 40 minutes in the bathroom at night. There's all those things that you start looking for that are changing patterns. Also start watching, always watch your economics, make sure there's no changes in money spending. Interesting. Yeah, because that and so what is the benefit of, of hiring a PI to discover this? Is it to prove it, I guess for if you were getting a divorce, maybe some people have prenups where they say if you cheat, then prenup is null and void or well just just to know. I mean, obviously there's a lot of legal ramifications to being a stalker as opposed to a licensed investigator. There's right. also <laughs> You know, the fact that we know how to do it and stay covert and nobody attributes to you. I mean, if you saw your ex-boyfriend out sitting in a car down the street, even if it's a different car, he's going to stand out to you. You're going to recognize him. So doing it yourself isn't really a viable option, I would say, 90% of the time. Even police officers that know how to do it, that have been trained, they're going to hire a private investigator because they know these things. Mm hmm Right. No, absolutely. So, um, and, and people hire it just to, to prove that the person's cheating or sure. for divorce it's, proceedings or, uh, and for both. And, you know, they hire us because they want to know and they want to be certain and they want to get enough evidence so that there's an absolute, because, you know, guys especially are going to try to lie their way out of everything. They're going to make an excuse for this or that. And it's like, oh, well, that's not what that is. That's something completely different than you think it is. And they're going to go. So they want to be absolutely positive. I mean, that's why, I mean, we have bait girls that we employ sometimes. And we send them out to go see if this guy is going to hit on them. And what he says to them at lunch meetings or things like that. And so it's because people want to be absolutely sure of what they think. And if they're, if they're not right, then they have done no harm, no foul. It's not like you've jumped out of the bushes and said, oh, you did this, you did that, and everything else. If we don't find what we, what we think is out there and we find something completely the opposite, then our client, nobody ever knows that it ever happened. Okay, so it's, it's discreet the whole time and that's why you... Completely. And how long does this process typically take? It depends. I mean, sometimes we have cases we go out at, you know, four or five o'clock and by six thirty, one of my guys is saying, Hey, he's got a girl. They're heading to this place, you know, and they're getting video and footage and they go do something else. So maybe one night I've had them take literally weeks where I've told the client, look, we have to stop. He's not done anything. in all these weeks we've got two guys following him from morning till he goes to sleep at night. And you know, this actual client I'm talking about right now, became a very good friend of mine. And she's like, Andy, I know something's wrong. I, yeah. I know it. And she's like, please just stay on it. And she's paying for it. So I'm going to stay on it. And it literally wasn't three days later. And he's the four seasons with two hookers. And then okay. two days after that, we find him at a condominium that we find out he paid for, for another woman that had been living there for four years. So he was really doing a lot of things. And, I got to tell you, women, 90 plus percent of the time are right. We actually do the statistics at the end of every year, and okay. it's always around 92 to 98 percent of our women are right, and it's 45 to maybe 55 percent of the men. 
Oh my so gosh. Men, are more, men are more suspicious, but women are usually right about their suspicion. What is it? The women's intuition, right? Yeah, you guys, usually, your intuition. you guys usually know when it's, when it's happening. Yeah. And so um, do you have advice because you've seen so much of how to kind of cheat proof your relationship? Um, you know, if, if you guys can't pick up each other's phone and have maybe, you know, your face in it or your fingerprint or whatever. So you can just get in the phone and make a phone call if you reach over and that's the closest phone or you don't know where he's going all the time and you can't call his friends or anything like that. There's maybe some room for improvement. If you guys don't trust each other completely, there's probably a reason. Um, you know, guys look, girls look, people do things like that. There's things that we just let go. Like we've had women set up bachelor parties in Vegas where it's like, look, I want to know if he's going to sleep with another woman because if that's what he's going to do, I'm not, that's, that's going to end it. And so we've set women up to be at those bachelor parties. And, you know, if he just, you know, flirts and plays and he's just doing whatever, we don't even tell him. I tell them, I said, look, I'm not going to, you know, go into it and do this and ruin you guys' deal here because he's flirty at his bachelor party. That's ridiculous. Right. If he takes some, you know, he follows one of our girls up to the room and my guy is there and, you know, we usually set it up. So it's like, as soon as they open the door, she goes, oh no, my boyfriend showed up. He wasn't supposed to be here till tomorrow. And then, you know, guys like, hey, is that you? And then, so the guy beats feet out of her. At that point, then she's got an issue. So we, all the other things, if he's, you know, playing a little grab ass while he's down in the bar or whatever, or at the party, we let that go. And I tell him ahead of time, we're not there for that. We're going to see if he's going to actually do this. Right. And how many um, bachelor parties do you get hired on? Because I feel like if I had to hire a PI for my future husband, I probably shouldn't be marrying him. Well, and there's probably a lot of that in the first place. If you are that position, that's what I always say. It's like, if you weren't that worried about this guy, why are you doing it? And just say, like, yeah. because look, Sometimes the information comes from a bad place. Sometimes it comes from an ex. Sometimes it comes from another, you know, one of her exes that says, oh, I checked your guy out and he does this and he does that. Well, now she's got suspicion in her head, but it's maybe from a really bad source. And, you know, because she's getting fake news, but now she's, you know, got her head. Right. Apple's up. She wants to know what's going on. So she just wants to be sure. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Because then yeah, at no, that, that point, sense. you better trust him, you know, trust him. You know, if you get bad information, it makes you wonder. Just like, it's just like the news and, and social media nowadays. You can't, you know, you hear things and then you get all upset about something and find out, oh, that was never even true. I know. Isn't it crazy how false information travels faster than the truth these days? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gossip is king right now, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I know. It's like you got to source things. Like, where's it coming from? Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's great though, but you also work on other cases. We work on just about every kind of case you can imagine. We do digital forensics, uh, retrieving information from cell phones and computers. Um, we do preventative work, you know, penetration testing of companies, computer systems. We do post conviction work. We do criminal defense work. We investigate just about every type of investigations there is. We you know, you know, investigate employee conduct on jobs. Uh, we do construction and related investigations. In case there's a construction failure, we go out and find out why. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that we do. Accident, recreation, accident investigations. And do you do like murder cases and things like that? Sure, I've probably got three murder cases right now on the books, two post-conviction, one criminal defense. Oh my gosh. And are you hired by the police or? No, we are on those cases. We are usually opposed to the police or the prosecution. There's something wrong with their case that gives us enough to go out and, you know, either verify their uh, case and their evidence or dispute it and discredit it. And we've been pretty successful about it. I mean, obviously we get a lot of people that hire us that are very guilty and they're just hoping we find something procedurally that, you know, helps get them off. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Have you in your uh, 29 year career, you know, witnessed somebody that was wrongfully convicted? 
Many times. We've, we actually have had a few people released based on the investigations we performed in the last yeah. two years. So, and one of them had been in jail for 20 years. Um, oh my God. We hooked him up with the Innocence Project. I've got another guy that we just referred over to the Innocence Project with evidence that we provided to them. And it's very promising that he'll be out. It's a slow process to get new hearings okay. um, based on new evidence. So, you know, even though we've submitted the evidence on this latest case, uh, I think probably four months ago, he is probably looking at another year and a half before he has a chance to hear if he, they're even going to accept the motion. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it happens yeah, so often, yeah. you know. Yeah. Where, so it, it's good that there's kind of a, you know, an additional eye versus just the police and, you know, the FBI. Ab absolutely. And a lot of these guys, they get convicted you know, when they're 18 to 24 years old and they're sitting, you know, because they had a public defender, their case wasn't brought together very well. Everybody has to rush. Everybody's underfunded. They don't have any money. And, you know, later in life, somebody gets, you know, enough financial wherewithal that they can actually do a real case and a real defense. And we go back and obviously it's a much harder thing to find old evidence that means anything at this point. But it happens. We do. We, we've we been pretty lucky, especially finding old witnesses. I mean, we had one case where there was a shooting, a uh, bunch of high school kids. And, you know, now we're, we're talking to the kids that were in the other gang and they one's like, yeah, I actually did have a gun. He was right. I did. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was self-defense. And we've got two girls that were cheerleaders whose parents said, no, you're never going to be able to talk to the police. I don't want you talking to the police. I don't want you to be part of any of this gang stuff. And now they're out and it's like, yeah, no, we saw the guy with the other gun also. So, you know, wow. got a bunch, bunch of kids back in the day, you know, 25 years ago, carrying guns. And, you know, one of them gets shot. And, you know, now we have all these new witnesses and, and old witnesses that have changed their story because now they're grown, grown men. They have families and they are looking to keep, you know, things right now. Right. No, I did that. Absolutely. So um, what has been one of the most exciting uh, investigations that you've done that you can talk about? Oh, I've had so many. I don't know. I know. Uh, <laughs> you better, you, you better know, pick one up. No, I, I've literally traveled all over the world on investigations. I, uh, I've in the last two years, I think we just figured out that I'd been in 38 countries and all but Antarctica for continents. Um, so I get around, especially in, in the construction stuff, uh, you know, suspicious deaths. I had one in Avignon, France, not long ago. And so there's a lot of excitement as those kind of things happen. Uh, when I was young, I ended up on a domestic case, and I had been working for this one law firm, and one of the clients there was a very prominent businesswoman, um, Fortune 500 companies. Okay. and so she got to know me personally through some of the investigations on, you know, as they were acquiring other companies, we verified assets, things like that. And she called me directly. And what had happened is, and it was strange that she called me directly because usually her turn, the law firm would call me. Yeah. And she had married a um, associate lawyer at the firm who I had seen, I knew who he was, but we never had any real interaction. And she was, you know, missing money, missing a car that was purchased that she'd never seen. And so she asked me to start following him. And I literally ended up on a plane to New Zealand with him. She had no idea where he was going, just that he was leaving and he was catching a flight. She didn't know where. And so I ended up in New Zealand and uh, found out, you know, he was there and he was cheating on her. And, uh, he was actually cheating on her with one of his college roommates. So it was a very interesting case. And it was very exciting, especially back then. I, you know, hadn't been that many places. So it was a yeah. great time. And then I had to be on the same flight with the guy and make sure he didn't see me anywhere on the flight. Exactly. And did you, have you ever been caught? Um, you know, caught, we've been seen. We've, I mean, everybody, you know, sometimes, you know, people are watching sometimes and they might recognize that they're seeing the same car or something. We right. always have, you know, 
pre-scripted excuses for why we're where we are and things like that. We pretty much pay a lot of attention to where people's eyes are and how comfortable they are. Okay. Um, and so we're always looking for signs of them recognizing us. And if that happens, we just change the way we do it. Okay, so you, you stay pretty undercover. So you yeah. mentioned that you, you're hired by companies when they're purchasing other companies. Yeah. You know, mergers and acquisitions. Um, yeah. Have there been cases where companies have actually lied about the assets? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Especially, yeah. you know, construction companies, which I specialize in. Um, Very shady yeah. business. Well, you know, sometimes it's a shady business. Sometimes it's just... You know, there's a lot of corners that get cut, things like that. Yeah, it's okay. just sometimes people are working at very tight margins. Everybody's bidding on a job to get it as low as possible. And, you know, they, they leave things out that they know are going to happen. There's all those kind of things that happen. But, you know, I've seen equipment that is absolutely worthless be out there for, you know, what a brand new one would be worth. And so you're talking about heavy machinery that's worth, you know, 600 to a million dollars a copy. And, you know, if six of them are junk and they're still in there for, you know, $500,000 a piece, it's, you know, a big piece of a, a, a purchase sometimes. So, right. I mean, and that's just an example that everybody can relate to. It gets more detailed than a lot of other things. We do a lot of mining things, things like that, too. Interesting. Okay. That's great. Um, what did I want to ask you? Um, I wanted to ask you... Is it, a, okay, so it seems, if I was to, if somebody called a PI on me, uh -huh. what would the reasons have to be that you would follow them? Because it seems like it would be illegal in some cases to follow somebody without. Good cause. We, yeah. we screen out our clients pretty well. We make sure we're not just, you know, getting hired by some stalker. But the other thing is right. we don't. We don't provide um, real-time information. Um, we don't want uh, somebody showing up, starting a fight. We don't want you know a, a physical attack to happen while we're there watching. So we don't do real-time. We give information after the fact. So it's not providing anything that these people couldn't do on you know without a. What's the word I want to use? There's not a lot of liability for us to just follow you and give information about where you've gone. Um, paparazzi does it all the time with famous stars. I mean, right. one of the things <laughs> one of the things I do for a lot of celebrities is make it so, so paparazzi can't find them. Um, we sent people out and sent cars out that look like the people that they're trying to follow really fast and my people go wherever they want. Or we prevent paparazzi from even knowing where those people live. So we put their assets in, in different names and things like that so that nobody can find them. Yeah, because most people's addresses, you can kind of bring them up on Google, you know, which is scary. Uh, yes, yeah, some people, um, some you can, sure. But I guess if you're a big star, you're gonna wanna purchase it in an LLC or put a name. LLCs are still easily able to find out who's in them. Um, corporations, same thing. I have different means that I use to to entities I create that will are not re even recordable. So I can make it so nobody will ever find. Like if you ever needed me to make sure people couldn't find you and protect your assets from liability, I've got a string of ways that I do it. Okay, amazing. And that's a good question because we live in a very litigious uh, society where people are always trying to, you know, nickel and dime people. You've got uh, law firms that are running software trying to find pictures used or whatever used. And um, absolutely. So how that's that's the kind of the key is when you do, you know, amass wealth or even you're just your savings. Like, how do you prevent it from being um, from losing it to a silly well, that's that's why you protect each each asset from liability from the others. And like I said, I create these entities that were, are not that nobody can ever find out who's in them, why why they're created, who's a beneficiary of them, or any of those things. So, okay. yeah, I said like 
if you had multiple houses, each one would be in a separate entity. And note that way they could never cross liability. Um, obviously there's attorneys that would, you know, if they can find it, they would try to go after it, but it's, I've never had any of mine ever fall apart the way I set them up. Wow. Okay. And then you can also create something around like a trust where the extra money goes. So that's protected. As sure. Well. Sure. Absolutely. Trusts are great. If they're, if they're the right kind of trust formed in the right area, trusts are a good thing. Absolutely. We'll use them a lot. Cause yeah, it keeps the person protected. Should there be a lawsuit against them that they don't lose? Sure. Their sure. They just have to be very careful about the way that their, their money travels to and from each, each thing. That's the biggest thing about keeping those things safe. And so we set up formats for all of that. That's so interesting. It's so much easier for me to protect, thing, protect people ahead of time instead of after. I've got a whole lot of ball players right now that I, that's what I do for them all the time is just protect them ahead of time. So make sure that things get headed off. I mean, that's amazing. So if somebody, you know, has money that they want to protect, what's kind of the first step they can do? So it's not too overwhelming. You know, it just depends on what their assets are. It depends on where the assets are coming from. There's, it's, it's different every time. There's no one, one size fits all as far as that goes. So if, you know, my clients, they come to me, everything's a different thing. There's some things that you, you have to leave alone because of the way they are structured originally. It's mm -hmm. not worth the cost to try to move them or change them unless they want to just totally eliminate them and, and move on to the next thing. Um, it just, every single one is different. So there's not, not even a baseline that I can start from. Right. Okay. And so you say you have a lot of baseball players that you deal with? Uh, more NBA and NFL than baseball, but yeah, all three hockey players. I got two hockey players right now that I'm just setting up. So, okay. So they go to you and they say, Hey, in case I get busted with a hooker or, or, or somebody <laughs> wants to come on and say, I'm their baby mama. And are you know, Ooh, that's true. That happens a lot. <laughs> happens a lot. Um, in case, you know, I have something happen, you know, get in a car accident. Next thing you know, everybody wants your house. If they find out who you are and you know, if you're driving the car, they find out who you are. So yeah. there's all these things that you want to protect yourself from. You want to protect yourself from people even knowing where you are or where you live or where those assets are so that they can't just come to you and, and look for a way to create an injury or stuff like that. A lot of staged injuries. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it, it's, it shouldn't really be that shocking. I mean, we live in a crazy world right now. Yeah. Every, every department store, grocery store, you name it, they have teams of people to protect from that happening because it literally happens every day. People will see a wet spot and then act like they fell. And, you know, I've seen some of the craziest, stupid things on videotape in these stores and people trying to get away with saying they were injured, you know, slipping and falling in a store. I know. Isn't that crazy? I mean, how much protection do those, uh, it, it, those wet signs actually provide? Um, you know, a lot of the times people will create the incident, you know, they'll oh, drop like something the, on oh the my floor. God. Yeah. And, you know, then act like they fell in it. So no, those little signs don't protect it, the store at all. I mean, it's something that prevents them from having what they call serious and willful negligence because they've done this thing to try to prevent people from falling. And, you know, that's the same thing by having, you know, assessments of the dangers of these places. There's people that go around and, and a lot of private investors and go around and say, okay, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. Yeah. And you need to fix these things. And that way, if somebody tries to sue them and say, oh, you're negligent, say, no, look, we, we go around, we hire, you know, Andy or these other private investigators to come in and tell us this is safe or not safe. We do what we can to prevent right. these kind of things from happening. So it lowers their liability threshold. Right. Which is very, very smart. So you'd also mentioned previously that you do uh, paparazzi type stuff. Well, we like preventing prevent, the paparazzi. Yeah. We, and it goes back to the same thing of, you know, putting the homes and other things in other names so that they can't find them, registering the cars in different entities so that they can't just run the plates and find out who owns it and who's in it. There's a lot of those kind of things that we do. So, and you you said you're in Calabasas. So do you ever run mm -hmm. into the Kardashians up there? I know not the Kardashians lately. Um, 
that's a lot of people that are very close to them actually lately. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful area. It's a great area. I love it up here. So you must have a lot of paparazzi kind of surrounding that area, right? No, I got to tell you, a lot of the paparazzis go into the places that somebody's press agent said, oh, they're going to be there. You know, they're they're waiting for them to show up at a restaurant because they know they're coming. So a lot of okay. paparazzi is not just they're not just running around chasing people all day and all night. They know where they're going to be. Press agents or or managers or agents will tell them where to go and make sure that they're seen so they can stay relevant. Right, because I've heard those stories too, where they'll actually get ready and then they'll call and be like, "This is where I went." And it's like, "Really?" Yeah, yeah. yeah you, exactly. you can always tell the ones that were planned and the ones that weren't. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like in the in the different photos. Um, so, what are some of the cool celebrity cases you've worked on? Obviously, you don't have to share names because I know there's some privacy laws, but um, I've had some where you know there was paternity cases that came up, and you know some of the people you know were knowingly with that woman and you know it turns out that it you know couldn't have lined up just because of timing but you know we go out and we have to prove that there's you know dna evidence things like that and do that without raising a lot of awareness publicly so and obviously one of the threats to getting money is to bring things out publicly so we try to quell all that ahead of time because okay. once you know you, you see how the press or social media gets out a hold of anything, it doesn't matter what the truth is, you know, three weeks later, it's still going to have a lot of play with the original story that came out. It doesn't matter if it's real or not for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then what about politicians? Do you work with politicians? Sure. I actually do work with a lot of politicians. Actually, I just had a, a case, I guess about a year ago that uh, honestly, uh, it would just, I, I think there's a news release coming out. It may have actually came out today. I was notified that it's coming out soon of a guy running for Congress and uh, his ex-girlfriend was running for Congress too. They broke up different districts and she got restraining orders against him and, and things like that. And then next thing you know, she's trying to lure him in and she's setting up photographers and everything else. And we're watching her do it. We're getting, you know, photo and videos of her setting him up and then calling him on the phone through a block number. We had already installed software in his phone that would decode the number so he could see who was calling. And, wow. you know, she's on the phone calling him in while she's got a restraining order. I'm saying, oh, hey, yeah, I want to work this out. You know, I want to fix things so we can campaign against, you know, the other opposition together and, you know, luring him into these things. And, you know, he actually ended up getting arrested for it. And um, that was after we had the evidence. Then he decided not to do anything with it because they were talking. And then he showed up near her house up in Northern California and he was arrested up there. I didn't even find out he got arrested for a couple of months actually. And then, so now there's a story. I, I, I think it came from his camp because he told me I could release all the information of it. Actually, I, he just got that to me a couple of days ago. So I know I've talked to two reporters and, the FBI it, regarding it. Can you mention his name since it's coming out? Yeah, he's a Republican uh, who's running against Maxine Waters, Omar Navarro. Okay, gotcha. And, and uh, I know at the time he was pretty popular online and, you know, he's, yeah. he's, he's ended up with it. It really, hurt, you know, it hurt him bad with all that. So, it, of course, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of scandals that have come out around politicians. Yeah. And yeah, and he was warned. I warned him repeatedly. Don't trust her. Don't go see her. Stay away from her. Yeah. And, Sometimes you know, they think with their little brain, right? Yeah, or not at all. <laughs> or just not at all. Um, do you know anyone or do you have a, will you have a chance maybe to work on the Hunter, Hunter Biden stuff? That's... You know what? Hunter Biden stuff's being worked on by so many people right now. And honestly, with the evidence in some of the hands that it's in law enforcement wise, you're not going to get good enough access to it to say things. I mean, there's things to go run and get little pieces and parts. Mm -hmm. um, if the right people hired us, sure, we would be on top of it. Um, it just depends. And, you know, we get things like this. There's some other stuff that I can't go into, but it's recent and current on a very 
just as prominent, maybe actually more prominent case. And, you know, we found our evidence to be very different than the narrative that was coming out of everybody. And now, now it's kind of gone that way. But, you know, like I said before, a false story will have legs forever. And, you know, a lot of people will never believe the uh, change. And a lot of people, you know, want to run with what they believe from the beginning. They don't care what the truth is. So that's why you have so many times where there's two truths out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's such a such a crazy time. I mean, so because you're kind of in the depths of this stuff and, and you're really familiar with it, um, the media must just drive you nuts watching the, the news. The, yeah, the media anymore. I mean, I'm, I've been around a long time, so I, uh, right. I remember – I remember watching Walter Cronkite and, you know, he told you what was happening and that this is what's reported from here. This is what these people are saying this, and this is what these people are saying. So you kind of got both sides of everything. And now you get what somebody wants to tell you, not what's actually out there. This jacket's driving crazy. Yeah. Um, so the news does drive me crazy because they don't really care too much about evidence anymore. They care about what, Narr and and this is all the way around the block. I'm not blaming you know Fox or CNN specifically. It's all the way around the block. They they want to get information out. A lot of I, at first it started out because they wanted to scoop the story. They wanted to be the first to report something. So verification you know got less and less and less. And then it didn't matter anymore. They found out that sensationalism was better than verification. So now it's just like get whatever out there you know. You talk to any news reporter, they're going to tell you one of their favorite things, because I've worked right along news reporters on several cases, back all the way to OJ, and they're going to tell you, hey, if it bleeds, it reads. That's what's going to go online. You know, That's where we're going with it. And yeah, okay, the, the, this isn't as good a story to tell that this little piece of evidence is even there. And yeah, it's it's big when you put it together with everything else, but yeah, we're not going to go there. We don't, it's, not, it's not flashy. It doesn't help our story. I mean, that's just so crazy that it's like, I want to see a day in this country or in this world where news organizations are actually liable for the lies or the twist that they tell because their well, job is to give us the facts and the news, not try to mind control people. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, you see it happen here and there. Um, you have, Cases like the kid that the Indian confronted was right in his face and they made yes, it look like yes, he was yes. a, a Trumper. I don't even remember the, the, all the details, but I mean, he got something like, I think it was like $250 million with my mind recalls from CNN and, you know, but CNN doesn't care about spending $250 million. They, you know, got their narrative out there. They got all the, everybody hyped up and, and people have stayed hyped up and, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, uh, I investigated some of the stuff regarding Amy Collins in New York City and in the park with her dog and uh, or Amy Cooper and uh, yes. Christian Cooper. And, um, you know, they tried to make Amy out as this horrible racist person. And, you know, I've talked to her. I've talked to other people that have encountered Christian Cooper. I, you know, talked to people she used to live with. I, you know, I've heard all the tapes I've been through at ad nauseum and you know the poor woman was in the middle of this thing in COVID in New York which is horrible she's got locked in with a dog the dog is not good on a leash and she goes to the park and this guy who had confronted many people this wasn't the only one and you don't hear the actual threats on the tapes but if somebody said the things that he said to me and to my about and what he was going to do and then, you know, attempt to do what he did to her dog, to my dog, he'd have been the one calling the police. It wouldn't have been the other way around. So Amy is not a racist. She's, uh, you know, she had a bad moment and she's being judged by a two minute part of her life. She's been made out to be this right wing Nazi and she's a leftist from Canada. You know, <laughs> she's just, she's just a target now. They don't even care. They'll, you know, they'll eat their own to get a story out. I, in that, cause uh, yeah, I never saw anything on the, but I remember him saying like, no, 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 I don't want to press charges. I don't want to, 
do this, like lay off it, it probably because what he said. Yeah. And her, her sister's in media. And so they got together and she, you know, helped push the issue and get it out there. And it's just like both of them. I mean, and I'm not making him out to be a horrible, horrible person either, but he's not, he's no more innocent or, or worse than she is. He's, you know, they both had a bad day and they're both going to be judged by that day for, or not even a day. They had a, a 10 minute encounter. I know. And I'm now look what that. it is. It's, and they're both being monikered for life by that 10 minute encounter. I, I mean, you can take my life and not, you can find hours of time that I would not want to have plastered all over the media. All of and, us do. Yeah. And you, you, you get people like Joe Biden, Donald Trump, when you're in the media 24 seven, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that makes you look horrible. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's what gets played over and over and over again. You know, those little one minute sound bites over 60 minutes, you know, it, it makes you look like a horrible, horrible person. I mean, you can destroy people with media and social media the same way. That's why we have laws against, you know, certain things on social media. California has got laws against revenge porn now, finally. And we do a lot of investigation on revenge porn, actually. Um, my God. So there needs to be more accountability for sure. I mean, on the lower levels with social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of those, and at the higher level, national news. There almost isn't any relevant local news anymore. Well, there isn't. Like, you just don't know kind of what – what to believe. I mean, I guess people are saying the BBC seems to be very in the middle and unbiased and, but I don't know. You, you know, I was seeing, uh, you know, what's the, uh, what's the Russian no, 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 news network or is it R, R, N, RCN or RN? I don't know. I and didn't Al even know there was one. <laughs> Al Jazeera was great for a while and then it changed. So, you know, you have to kind of look at the, uh, at other countries viewpoints, but then, I travel so much that I was, you know, I was in Australia la before their last election and you would think, Oh, we're the laughing stock of the world. We, the world hates us. I'm in Brazil and then Australia and then England. And the people that are winning the elections are the guys that sound just like Donald Trump. I'm thinking, well, that's not the narrative I've been watching. You know, <laughs> it's, this is right. they're, they're much more behind these other candidates than they are. than I've been told. So, you, you know, you can't even believe the news on the way they re relate to the way we sit with the rest of the world. I know. It's just like you want them to be held accountable. You want to get rid of the power of Twitter and Google and all those companies. I mean, they obviously have a, a very hidden, a very obvious now agenda. And, uh, you know, they're negatively affecting a lot of people. And as much as it makes us upset, karma is real they right I agree. in the end and you look at these companies that you have you know one or two personalities controlling and obviously money is not a factor anymore the money doesn't matter there's Fair nothing you can't there's nothing you can't get in the world so what's left power so why else would you stay in the business unless you want to change something otherwise you know sell it out among, you know, let more stock, you know, stock, uh, stock purchasers own more of it and profit from it. Um, that's not what they want to do. They want to control it and you want to control things for power. Uh, power and money is, is why you do things at that level. And I'd like to see some of these things. I mean, to me, Facebook being able to buy, uh, Instagram and then being able to buy a lot of the smaller competitors so that they can't even get into the game. You know, we go to back to Teddy Roosevelt and why he started, you know, was the trust buster, you know, breaking down the monopolies. And, wow. you know, Google has not become a total monopoly and there's things coming out against it. And honestly, it wouldn't take much to put another platform in place. It's just getting everybody to move. And, you know, everybody just, you Google things now. You don't Yahoo them. You don't. You know, right. bang them you, or don't, you don't bing them. Yeah. So that's, and, and, you know, Yahoo was out there and AOL way before there was a Google. And so that's they did true. some of the right things to get to that position, but you know, money's not the factor yet. They make a huge, huge amount of it. 
So they, you know, now it's like, ah, oh, we don't, I don't care if we lose money this month. I want to see my candidate win Congress. So we have a lot of power to push things that way. I mean, it, I know you're not a, not a psychologist, but it's amazing. It's like, how do people get so crooked when it comes to power? You know, because I've always wondered that. Like, I, I, you know, I like Warren Buffett. I, I like his investment advice. I like finance. Um, but it's like, it's why is a, he still working? Why is, it's, why is Bill Gates still, like? It's, it's, not, it's not about becoming crooked. It's about um, you want to stay in the game. You want to, you can do it. You enjoy it. You've done something for so long. It's your game. It's what you like to do. And it's not being crooked if you really believe in something. I mean, just because one of these people may or may be on your side in like a political campaign or against you, they probably truly believe that that other candidate, the one that they're pushing for, the one that they're manipulating things for is the right person. So they're doing things because of their belief. I mean, you see it in religion all the time, all the religions. Yeah. Some of them have to be wrong about something because they're very polar opposite. But it's done because of belief. It's not done because of anything that we would consider mentally um, – uh, what's the word? That they want to do it because they have some evil thought process. They're doing it because they think they're right. Right. Yeah, I know. And we're seeing a lot of that today for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, just the cra crazy stuff, right? Yeah, people uh, flew jets into buildings because they felt they were doing the right thing. Geez. And obviously, we know that that's not the right thing to do in any circumstance. But there were people that were convinced they were doing the right thing. So it's not based on what they think is evil. They think they're doing something good. I don't know. It's just crazy. They're just the different beliefs and powers and needs and yeah, it's a, it's a cra crazy world. So um, what's your advice to keep this is kind of a general question, but you can answer it. However, what's your advice <laughs> to the listeners to keep yourself safe? Yes, just be aware, you know, pay attention, you know, educate yourself as much as possible in, on anything that comes up there. And, you know, don't, don't just take things that people tell you, learn how to find the evidence. That's, you know, that's why I like what I do because I, when I get finished with whatever I'm working on or even things I'm interested in, I dig, I find out what the true story is. Um, there's so much more that you don't get. I mean, even with this whole COVID thing, I've researched a whole lot of different things about this. And there's so many things that you're just not even getting in the news that may or may not apply, but at least you can understand how they could. And if you pay attention and you learn how to think about many things, it, you're not going to be fooled as easily. Yeah, and at least you'll know the truth, right? Which is, truth will set you free, as they say. At least you'll know, you, at least you'll know what direction it's going in right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, this has been great. Where can uh, they find you and find more information on you? Oh, kandassociates.com. K A Y A N D Associates. Okay. Um, that's our website, and you can see us. We have we're on Instagram. I think K A Investigates. Um, we're on Facebook. You can find me Andy K on Facebook, um, or K and Associates Investigations on Facebook. We're we're everywhere. You Google us, you'll find us everywhere. Just look up Andy K Private Investigator. You'll find me. Okay, perfect. Well, this has been great, you guys. And obviously, all his, uh, all the links to the information will be on our website under the episodes. You can uh, find out more information or hire him yourself. I'm going to hire you for future assets. <laughs> there that you sounds go. great. Well, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll... when I'm ready to buy a house, I'm doing it in an LLC. <laughs> Not an LLC. <laughs> Not an LLC. Okay, so whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. You're right. LLCs are very breakable. It's true. That is okay. true. Well, Andy, thank you so much for, for being on Next to Madison. This was very fun. It was, very yeah, it's fun for me anytime. Education. Got any questions, give me a holler. I will. And you guys listening, wherever you're listening, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Next to Madison. And we'll see you guys next time to find out who's next. Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms. And please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. 
Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at next to I thank you again for listening. Bye.